As we acknowledge the land today, may we be in awe of the opportunity just to be here in the midst of the marvel of creation sprawling through time and space. Here we are in this moment, in this place. Let's slow down and ground ourselves here. I invite you to pause and take a breath to feel yourself anchored where you are. Close your eyes. Feel your body. And now notice the land itself and feel how it's supporting us. We recognize this land has been home to indigenous peoples for thousands of years. They lived here and thrived here long before European settlers arrived and drastically changed their lives and the life of the land. We we're hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. The light of Christ calls us to walk in the way of the peacemaker. We walk this road one step at a time. As we discover and create this path, we listen within and we listen to those around us. The Christ light calls us to support one another as we journey. And in the face of systemic racism here in Canada and the many ways that we perpetuate it, we are called to listen and learn, to challenge and change the status quo, and to allow space for others to walk their paths. May this light remind us to walk faithfully in the way of Christ. We affirm this journey by extending the light. For you are welcome. You are part of this community of faith. And this way of being together as we deepen into it teaches us that we are a community that doesn't think the same, vote the same, or love the same, but tries our best each day to follow in the way of Jesus. We hope that today you will recognize God wherever you are. And the season of creation, which is marked by the color orange and the changing of the church year, calls us to the great sanctuary of God's creation. May you find yourself worshiping God, connecting even to each blade of grass. Let's worship together. Every wing that soars, the waves that sweep across a distant shore, make full the circle of God. Each laughing child, every gentle eye, a forest lit beneath a moon bright sky, make full the circle of God. Each silent paw, every rounded stone. That echoes from a honeyed comb Make full the circle of God Each fire-brimmed star Every outstretched hand The wind that leaps and sails across the land Make full the circle of God Each icy peak Every patterned shell the joyous chorus that the dawn foretells Make full the circle of God Each cosmic hue, every creature's way All form the beauty of this vast array Making full the circle of God
Hamba nati mekuli wetu Hamba nati mekuli wetu Hamba nati mekuli wetu Hamba nati mekuli wetu Mekuli 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 wetu Mekuli 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 wetu Mekuli 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 wetu Mekuli 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 wetu You are holy you show us the way 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 You show us you show us you show us the way You show us you show us you show us the way You show us you show us you show us the way You show us you show us you show us the way You are justice 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 you show us the way You show us you show us you show us the way You show us you show us you show us the way You show us you show us you show us the way You show us you show us you show us the way Hamba nati meguli wetu Hamba nati meguli wetu Hamba nati meguli wetu Hamba nati meguli wetu Meguli 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 wetu Meguli 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 wetu Meguli 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 wetu Meguli 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 wetu And on this day, we light lights of memorial, honoring those in your life who you may be remembering through anniversaries or birthdays, who aren't with us in person but are part of the cloud of witnesses, those who have shown us the way, those who have invited us to keep walking forward, taking steps in faith to make this world a better place. And remember, we're on this path together. We honor their light today. And on this path, the gates of holiness are open wide. And on this path, of holiness are open wide and on this path the gates of holiness are open wide open wide open wide open wide the gates are open wide so enter in so enter in the gates of holiness are open wide so enter in of holiness are open wide, so enter in. The gates of holiness are open wide, open wide, open wide, open wide. The gates are open wide. One more time on this path and on this path. The gates of holiness are open wide and on this path. Of holiness are open wide and on this path. The gates of holiness are open wide, open wide, open wide, open wide. The gates are open wide. The living God is with us and with all creation. A passage from the Psalms, Psalm 19. May we be equipped by these words to walk in love with God, with ourselves, with our neighbors, with all creation. Hear these words. 
The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world." In the heavens, God has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong human runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple." The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear us from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over us. Then we shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord our rock, and our redeemer. Herein lies wisdom. Thanks be to God. And through these words, may we see God more clearly, love God more dearly, and follow God more nearly, day by day. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things but strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Herein lies good news. Thanks be to God. Is the Christian faith a road, a pathway, a way of life? Or is it a parking lot, a warehouse, a system of belief and a system of sin management and a system of death preparation? I think there's a real struggle going on right now among an awful lot of people. Some inside the church who are are dissatisfied with this kind of warehouse mentality that we get you in a room, we get you in a building, we get you, we keep you occupied singing songs and saying prayers and so on so that we'll protect you so you can be shipped off to heaven when you die. I, I mean, a lot of people, they really believe that and it works for them, but a lot of people say, that doesn't make sense. Uh, other people are saying, no, we think Christian faith is supposed to be a way of life, a way of life that teaches us how to relate to God, how to relate, how to kind of survive inside our own skin, how to relate to our family and our friends, but not only that, how to think about the neighbor across the street or the neighbor on the other side of the tracks 
or the neighbor on the other side of the world in the middle of a war zone or in a refugee camp or in some other place of great struggle and need. As we are trying to determine what the Christian faith is going to be, a lot of us are rediscovering it as a way, a way of life, a road that we walk, a pathway. It fits so perfectly with Jesus who really walked along a beach one day and said to some fishermen who were there, hey guys, come follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. I'll take this life that you have and lift it kind of to a new dimension. I'll get you involved in, in the, the big work, the great work of life. And uh, for me, that's what it means to be a Christian. It means to be on a road, to be on a path, to be learning a way of life. For a lot of people, when they think about the path and salvation, they think, oh, this is, uh, you know, uh, 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 it's defined as here's how to go to heaven when you die. But I think salvation has a much richer meaning than that. I think that's a meaning that emerges in Christian history, and there's a whole history and story to that definition of salvation. But the word salvation gets its original meaning in the biblical story from the liberation of slaves from Egypt. Salvation in the Bible means liberation. It means setting people free, obviously from physical slavery in that original story, but then setting people free from other kinds of slavery, slavery to all the internal tapes that we play and the scripts that, that kind of dominate us that we want to be free from, socially from all the games we play with each other, and even politically and economically, you know, we're kind of enslaved right now to an economic system that is destroying the planet. And we need liberation. We need to find a better way to live in relation to the planet. We live in what some people call the military industrial complex that's geared around killing off our enemies. And some of us say, no, we need to be liberated from that. Salvation would be learning how to reconcile with our enemies and actually become friends. So, when salvation changes its meaning for us, when we rediscover a deeper and really more biblical meaning for that word salvation, everything else will change. When Jesus would uh, meet people and challenge them to follow him, uh, he was inviting them into a new path of what I call aliveness. He called it life abundant, life to the full. You know, he used a word for it. In Greek, the word is zoan aeonian, which means life of the ages. Maybe if you could think of it this way, it's a big life. It's not life just stuck in this present age, life in this particular culture, life under this political or economic regime, but life of the ages is a great big life. Life to the full, aliveness. Unfortunately, that phrase, life of the ages, often gets translated in English as eternal life, which then means life after death. We're really, I think Jesus is talking about something that begins now. The key to that kind of life is confidence that death is not the end, that, it, 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 that we don't really fall out of life and into nothingness, but we fall out of life and into God. And so that sense of confidence that we don't have to be afraid of death helps us live this life more to the full. Every day when you wake up, just keep this in mind. There are people spending billions and billions of dollars to make you unhappy. To make you unhappy until you buy their product, vote for their candidate, you know, believe their spiel, whatever it is. They're spending a lot of money making you dissatisfied, ungrateful, unhappy, discontent, so that you'll need what they're selling. If we want to find happiness, it's not going to happen by accident. We're going to have to have something so strong going on in our lives that it's stronger than all these attempts to make us discontented and unhappy and unsatisfied. Uh, that's why I think each of us, part of a way that each of us needs is, you might call it a discipline or a set of habits or a set of practices that, that in some ways counteract all these negative things coming in from the outside and all the negative stuff we kick up from the inside key to that, I think, is some basic practices in how we live our day, how we get up in the morning, how we begin our meals, how we 
calm down at the end of the day and go to sleep. We might call those personal practices. Uh, then I think there's a set of communal or social practices where we get together with other people who are also seeking that kind of deeper and higher aliveness. And we get together with them and we encourage each other in that, that better way of life. I think there's also a kind of curriculum that we want to focus on. There are a set of skills we want to learn. There are stories that our ancestors have told and retold for centuries, and those stories have deep meanings that help us live with more uh, aliveness and fullness. Uh, I, I think life is a lot like you know everything else. It, it, it's it's subject to entropy. The energy dissipates. It it corrodes. It weakens unless we're letting some new energy source arise within us. And for me, those spiritual practices are the practices that keep the well open, that keep the spring flowing so that we can be fully alive with that greater, bigger, deeper kind of life. the shadows come why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion and friends I 
dancing because I'm happy and I sing because I'm free his eyes on the sparrow and I know he watches me he watches me is me and I know he watches me please join me as we pray together All things come from you, O oh God, and to you we return. All things emerge in your great river of life, and into you we vanish again. For everything that emerges from the earth, thanks be to you, O oh God, holy root of being, sacred sap that rises in full-bodied fragrance of earth's unfolding form. May we know that we are of you, May we know that we are in you. Guide us as nations to what is deepest. Open us as peoples to what is first. And lead us as a world to what is dearest. That we may know the holiness of wholeness. That we may learn the strength of humility. That together we may live close to the earth and grow in grounded glory. Widen our eyes and our hearts, that we continue to hear you. Strengthen our feet to walk in the way you would have us, and inspire us to realize our roles as co-creators, walking your path one step at a time, one breath at a time, dreaming new dreams, even as we continue looking to Jesus' example, as we pray now together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What a gift to hear a sermon this morning as part of worship from Brian D. McLaren. He wrote the book that's going to accompany us as a community of faith for the next 52 weeks for a whole season of the church year together. I'm grateful for his wisdom in preaching, and I want to share with you a video that will talk a little bit more about the book, We Make the Road by Walking. We aren't on this journey alone. There are other congregations who will also be reading and praying and singing through this book together. It will be a chance for us to share resources, but also to learn from each other. Brian, when he wrote the book, he hoped that there would be moments of delight, of pause, of wondering, of seeing the familiar in a new way that would help us on our journey. We do not know what the future holds, but we know who is guiding us and who we follow. And so I invite you to just listen for where your story meets this story on a new chapter together for our community of faith. We make this road by walking. You are not finished yet. You are in the making. You have the capacity to learn, mature, think, change, and grow. You also have the freedom to stagnate, regress, constrict, and lose your way. Which road will you take? What's true of you is also true for every community of people. 
including our spiritual communities. Like the individuals who constitute them, they are unfinished and in the making. They have the capacity to move forward if they choose and the freedom to stagnate and regress. Which road will they follow in the years ahead? Does their future depend solely on the action or inaction of officials in the headquarters of religious bureaucracies? Do the rest of us have to wait until somebody somewhere figures things out and tells the rest of us what to do? I believe that all of us play a role in choosing and creating our futures as individuals and as communities. We don't need to wait passively for history to happen to us. We can become protagonists in our own story. We can make the road by walking. Growing numbers of us believe that we are in the early stages of a new moment of emergence, pulsing with danger and promise. In this catalytic period, all our spiritual traditions will be challenged and all will change. Some negatively and reactively, tightening like an angry fist, others positively and constructively, opening like extended arms. More and more of us want to participate in that positive and constructive opening we want to explore new possibilities, to develop unfulfilled potential, to discover new resources to bless, inspire, and enliven. We don't shrink back from this moment. We feel God is calling us to walk into it with faith, hope, and love. can't wait to see what the Spirit gets up to in our community. Stay tuned for times of Bible study together, ways to sing the chapters where the hymns of our faith meet the scriptures. Each week you'll find out more in the Friday message to guide you as we walk together. And this is just one way that we're reaching out in a time where people are exploring and asking questions of their faith journey in our community and beyond. By being online, we're connecting also across our country. So I invite you to support this ministry through the virtual offering plate, through the e-transfer to office at islington.org, or thank you for placing checks in the mail or dropping them off to the church. We continue to do this ministry because of your support, and you're part of this. Thank you for blessing this journey. We're grateful to sing our closing hymn together, remembering those ancient words of old. Divine eternal love 
Go from this place surrounded by the unconditional love of God and following in the way of the Christ who risked for love. And may you be empowered by the Spirit as together we make this road by walking. Go in peace. Amen.